Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Hackers did something terrible to Chief of Staff John Kelly through his cell phone. President Trump's Chief of Staff John Kelly has been hit by hackers. According to Politico, Kelly's phone was compromised by hackers as far back as December 2016. However, he didn't find out about the hack until after the IT staff looked at it. When he attempted to update the software just a few days ago, Chief Kelly kept getting error messages. He decided to take it to the IT staff, who ran diagnostics and determined that the phone had been breached and was no longer safe to use. Now the issue at hand is, what did the hackers get? Kelly, a retired four-star Marine general, was part of Trump's administration from day one and was the Secretary of Homeland Security. Some people are spreading rumors that those secrets may have been compromised. That's plain wrong. The White House quickly responded to the claims, saying his phone was discontinued in December, which it would be days after the breach. Last December, General Kelly's personal phone stopped working and he discontinued its use. It's worth getting the story out before the mainstream media tries to run it without the official response of the White House. Help out by sharing this and let them know our country has not been infiltrated. Sarah Sanders just ended the Russia investigation in epic rant going viral. Sarah Huckabee Sanders has wit, sass, and panache. And she's not afraid to bring it to work every day. During her press conference on Thursday she brought the hammer down on the Senate Intelligence Committee, imploring the senators to wrap up their investigation into Trump-Russia collusion in the 2016 election. Here's exactly what she said. The Senate Intel Committee told us yesterday that after nearly nine months of investigating, that's included more than 100 interviews over 250 hours, 4,000 pages of transcripts, 100,000 pages of documents, interviewing officials in the intelligence community, who wrote the report on Russian election meddling, interviewing relevant Obama administration officials, and talking to every Trump campaign official they've requested. It's literally found zero evidence of collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. She continued. I think the American people would like them to focus on some other things. That's right. Sarah Sanders told it exactly like it is. I have to admit, in the beginning of the Russian investigation, I was looking forward to seeing Democrats waste their time chasing this obviously crazy story. But now it's October and God only knows how much money, resources, and time has been poured into this investigation which continues to turn up nothing. Naturally, the Senate Intel Committee will keep doing what it wants, probably keep wasting our time and money, and almost certainly continue to come up empty-handed. But Sarah Sanders just showed the world exactly how ridiculous they'll look if they do. Are you with Sarah and President Trump? Do you think this Russia collusion investigation is nonsense? Share it out, patriots. H.T. Washington Examiner What Sheriff Clark just said admitted about the Las Vegas shooting is jaw-dropping. Former Milwaukee Sheriff David Clark said on Thursday that he hasn't been in law enforcement for 40 years. He's suspicious about everything around the Vegas shooter. David Clark then sent out this tweet on Thursday, I've been in law enforcement nearly 40 years and I'm suspicious about everything. We need to engage the public more. We're dealing with the same FBI that refused to investigate Hillary Clinton. We still do not know the motive of the case. The special agent in charge for the Las Vegas division of the FBI said the following. Our resolve is firm. We will get to the bottom of this no matter how long it takes. We must focus on facts. We cannot give in to conjecture. We cannot respond to every little Twitter feed that may indicate a theory. We need to be focused on the facts. You need us to be right. You expect us to be right and we want to be right. 
The Islamic State claims that Stephen Paddock converted to Islam and the LV Sheriff claim that the killer was radicalized. Spread Sheriff David Clark's message everywhere. We need answers now. NFL hits rock bottom watch this Redskins player insult fans in video shocking the nation. Wow! NFL has literally hit rock bottom. The Washington Redskins receiver Terrell Pryor lost it after the game against the Chiefs on Monday. According to the LA Times, Terrell Pryor apologized for flicking of a Kansas City Chiefs fan. He then said this was a response to being called the N-word. Here's what he said, being called, the N-word several times to the point where an NFL employee had to step to me and stand by me the whole game from the second quarter on is the exact reason why guys are kneeling during Anthem, prior on Instagram post. I choose not to kneel because as a team we decided to be the one and stand, but as I walked in tunnel hearing someone call me, the end word, and say f you to me dot dot me flicking the person off is more deserving. I do apologize to my teammates and the organization. But at some point you keep calling us the N-word, we going to start acting up. Hashtag straight lip tat. Get this out there. The NFL needs to start respecting the people of this country. First, it's the disrespect of the flag and now it's insulting fans. It's not right if people called him the N-word, but he should act like a gentleman and ignore that crap. Share this everywhere if you want NFL to clean up its damn act. Thanks. IT's overtop Democrat just got hit with the worst sexual lawsuit imaginable. Look, everyone knows that the leftist establishment basically owns Hollywood and their elite. Hell, they already have Miley Cyrus shilling for Hillary 2020. Luckily, they just lost one of their biggest people in the worst way possible. Yesterday it was revealed that Hollywood producer and Democrat megadonor has been a serial sexual predator for decades. He forced innocent young girls to do very nasty things for him just to get jobs. According to the Daily Mail, Weinstein asked Ashley Judd to watch him shower and paid Rose McGowan $100,000 under a settlement for an incident shortly before her breakthrough role in Scream. But molesting young actresses and making movies was not the only thing Weinstein was known for. He also was a top donor and party buddy of Hillary Clinton. He gave Malia Obama one of her first internship jobs, and he was one of Obama's favorite guests at the White House. Weinstein even had the nerve to write an apology note where he quoted the new Jay-Z album, claimed things were different in the ADS when it came to forcing office girls to have sex in return for work and promised to use his time off to take down the NRA and make a movie about Trump. Clearly, he has lost it. So, now the question is, how much did the Democrats know? We already know Hillary loves to cover up for Bill. Were they covering for Harvey Weinstein, too? The best way to hold them accountable is to get the info out. Share this and let the people decide their fate. Marco Rubio just said the one thing about West Point commies everyone was too afraid to admit. It's been a while, but it looks like Marco Rubio is still around and now he is taking down the communists who have infiltrated West Point. Plenty of people saw the pictures of Spencer Arpone, a West Point graduate who took pictures with a sign saying communism will win hidden on his West Point uniform and a Che Guevara shirt hidden underneath. The media tried to pass it off as a misguided kid. Rubio has a different idea. Marco Rubio believes Ripon and all of his other anti-American commie infiltrators need to be immediately declared a national security threat. Members of the military who harbor anti-American views and express their desire to harm our country and its leaders are unfit to serve and defend our nation, Rubio wrote on Facebook. Spencer Ripon held a security clearance, but he advocated violence against political opponents and expressed admiration for Private Manning, a traitor who provided droves of classified information to WikiLeaks. Ripon clearly was and is a national security threat. 
he makes a great point. Ripon and anyone who sympathizes with communism like him have no business being anywhere near our military. They are dangerous and should be taken seriously. If you want to see Congress act to make sure this level of infiltration does not happen again, share this everywhere and let them know how you feel.